Okay, here we go, YouTube. I got my DC buck converter here. I'm running it off my bench supply. And what I need to do is put one of these units into internal resistance mode. So you hold the minus button, hit the power, and now you can see the top one there is flashing with an R. So I've got one of my used laptop cells here. So this is a pair pair of cells. Throw it in there and you can see it's reading 29 milliohms. And actually I, I found most of these, these all read within a few milliohms of each other. The, the main issue that I've found is that you've got to hold the minus button and then turn the power on. Problem so, is, unless you have a whole bunch of hands, it's hard to um, turn on more than a couple of units. You have to hold the minus button on every single one there. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. You can't hold all those buttons down. So I I think what I'll do is just stick with testing the resistance up here at the top. I've uh, actually relocated my voltmeter down here to the bottom. A little bit easier to get to here. So there we go. There's my cell measuring 4.08 volts. Here I have my uh, cell. It was an unknown brand, so I put a question mark there. Came out of the laptop pack at 245. And then actually after resting a couple of weeks, it was at 407. And then I just finished topping these off at 4.1 before I do the capacity test. And then I record my 29 milliohms. So this is actually one of the lower resistance pairs I have. Okay, I've got all the cells loaded up here, so I'll turn on the power. And then on these dischargers, all you have to do is hit the uh, SK key. And that's this uh, first one here on the right. And you just go down the row and then show you one other thing I did here. So we've got two, four, six, and eight. And then right down here, I added a small 40 millimeter fan. And that's actually powered off of the fan output up on the uh, upper. Yeah, so to power the fan, what I did here is I picked up the red wire off of the center of this power plug up here, and then the green wire here is the F minus pad, and then I just ran the wires down underneath all the boards, and then down to a little fan that I have there. And that, I just have it so it kind of blows some air up so the air kind of filters up past all the heat sinks. So a couple of things on these, you can set up this fan to automatically turn on. So there's three modes. One is called SF0, which says turn the fan on any time this is discharging. Then there's an SF5, which says turn the fan on above 5 watts. And then I think there's an SF10 that says turn the fan on above 10 watts. So I have it set on the SF0 mode that says just turn the fan on any time this upper unit is being used in discharge mode. And then the other thing to do if you're setting up multiple units like this, turn off the beeper because I forgot to do that the first time I used this and when you get eight of these all hit the uh, three volt cutoff it sounds about like a fire alarm going off it's just almost unbearable the noise that's definitely one to uh, watch for is turn off the beeper and then I showed you earlier turning them on to four wire mode because I have the sense wire here and then I have my discharge wire is the yellow and white wire here. So if you're in four wire mode, you're sensing the voltage right there on the uh, spring terminal and then the charging comes in here at the bottom. So yeah, I think we're running here. We've got one amp discharge and they're all set to cut off at three volts and I've charged all the cells to 4.1.
So that should be pretty similar to what I was doing before. I'll let these run and uh, pull each one out, write down the capacity. And these are kind of nice. The meters keep displaying the, the capacity after you pull the cell out, which is nice. The other thing that's nice is if you lose power, like if I shut the power off right now, like let's try that. So here I'm at uh, 118 milliamp hours. Now I can shut the power off and I can turn the power on and there we go we're right there 120 so you can lose power and not lose your uh, capacity test. Eight pair of cells so we're discharging 16 cells all at once and it's running here let me show you the power supply here so I've got it at roughly 20 volts pulling about a quarter of an amp there I think I had what eight pair of uh, cells here had a couple of good ones here 3696 and 3706 and I had a couple of uh, Dell batteries here that were kind of in the Low end, 3321, 3319, and then these uh, these were out of a compact battery. These all came out really low, for 1350 to uh, 1485 here. Interestingly, that's the first time I've seen uh, correlation here. These had really low internal resistance, 29 milliohms for the pair, and these came out high. These had kind of intermediate, 34 milliohms, came out in the middle, and then these had higher internal resistance, 51 to 53, and these all tested very low capacity. So that's the first time I've seen a really direct correlation between internal resistance and capacity like that. So I have to see if this trend follows. I didn't see any of that in my earlier testing because I was using my eye charger. I don't think I had the sense cables or the four wire testing set up on that one. And in that case, these readings here might actually be a little more accurate than the uh, in the eye charger because that one I was getting more like 70 to 80 milliohms for most of these and some up in the 100 milliohm range. But yeah, the first, uh, that was the first time I did eight pair of cells all at once and that worked out really good and that was the first test with the uh, DC buck converter installed and it didn't really get warm at all so that's a, a good result so yeah I just wanted to check out how effective this fan is so down below I have the fan blowing air up along the heat sinks and this top the discharger's been running Oh, let's see, it's probably been running about 40 minutes. Let me get on the same setting I was on before. I don't know if that shows up there, but I'm getting like right at 70 C on the heat sink where before I was getting 75 to 77. Seems to help. I may need to change the fan. I think that's an old one that was getting noisy. I think that fan right there is the one I took out of my... Turnigy 8 cell charger that was noisy. But yeah, that's working quite well. So, what I'm doing now is I'm taking this one battery here and I'm repeatedly charging and discharging it. And then I'm going to walk that battery through all of the eight dischargers. What I'll end up doing is I'll have capacity readings of this one battery in all eight devices and then I'll also check it against uh, what one of my RC chargers probably use my Turnigy charger since it's set up for 4.1 volt charge and discharge so I'm doing all the charging on the Turnigy I'll do the eight discharges here and actually what I'll probably do I started down at the bottom here so I started in number seven and then I did number eight. Now I'm up to number one and I'll go all the way through and then I'll retest it in number seven just to get a before and after just to see if there's any change in the battery. 
and then I'll, I'll do a discharge in my Turnigy charger and then we'll be able to compare all eight of these discharge capacities with what the Turnigy reads and just see what kind of uh, repeatability and consistency we get between the different units. So we'll see how that goes. I'll, I'll do a follow-up video when I get all the test results and we can just take a look at what the various chargers do as far as um, how consistent they are. So stay tuned for that video and uh, yeah if you have any questions post up in the comment section down below and I'll put the follow-up videos over here on the left side. And as always, thanks for watching.